Welcome back, everybody. Today in the spotlight, we have a fume extractor showdown. That's right, a showdown. I'm going to pick the most expensive, or at least one of the most expensive, and a cheap, inexpensive fume extractor. They're going to put them head to head, and we are going to see who comes out on top. It is going to be a lot of fun. In front of us are two of the best fume extractors on the market today. The Heiko FA400 on the left, and on the right, the little Kato. Um, has no special branding other than the Kato name itself. Both are desktop fume extractors in the spotlight. Now, the Hiko is well known to most of us in the industry. They've been around for a long, long time. They make some great soldering stations and uh, are synonymous with quality. Um, on the other hand, Kato has not been around for very long. They are coming up uh, with a name pretty darn fast, putting out some pretty interesting products at really, really reasonable prices. In the box itself is the fume extractor, the carbon insert, and an instruction manual. Um, yeah, that's it, that's all. You don't get too many perks with the Heiko. The Kato fume extractor, on the other hand, ships with an extra carbon insert, which is always a nice thing. As well, you get your instruction manual. Both of the fume extractors come pre-assembled. Nothing you have to do, just basically plug and play or hopefully not plug and pray. Wow, look at these two together. It is like night and day, huge, huge contrast in size. But don't be fooled, it's really an optical illusion. The housing on that Heiko is just giganormous. Wow, and that is what we're looking at. The size of the fans is identical. So if we take a look size-wise of the Kato, we're looking at about five inches in height, about 122 millimeters. On the width, it's about another 122 millimeters here, according to the caliper. Um, and why is it 122? Well, it's just enough to accommodate that 120 millimeter fan. So um, that is what we're looking at. Now, if you look at the Heiko on the other hand, Wow, I mean, we're talking about a good five and a half inches in terms of the overall width of the unit. And in terms of the height, it's about 7.5 inches. But once again, the size of the fan is identical. Now here with that carbon insert, you can't tell, but it is the same size as the Kato. So you're getting a bigger housing, but a plastic housing as opposed to a smaller metal housing. Taking a look at those carbon inserts, the Heiko, uh, coming in about 10 millimeters larger at 128 millimeter compared to the 118 millimeter of the Kato. Now that does not necessarily dictate um, better performance, just a bigger carbon insert required because you have a larger frame. Looking at the all important power button location, well for the on off rocker switch on the Heiko, you can see it is at the top on the back of the unit. Now this has its good and its bad points. I'll, that, I'll point that out in a second. On the Kato, on the other hand, we have the rocker switch on the side. Preferably uh, my choice. I don't like anything in the back or behind where I can't see it. Side usually dictates easy access. Now, because of the versatility of that Heiko and you can put it on its side on the horizontal, you can see now the power button has miraculously come out on top. This is obviously a lot preferable and uh, probably why the engineers decided to put it there in the first place. There is an optional stand, uh, part number C1568 for the Heiko. Basically, this will elevate your fume extractor to any position you want over your work area. This is kind of neat. Uh, it would come, these two screws here on either side of the Heiko would come apart and you would just slide that extender on top. Now, unfortunately, this comes with quite a price hit. We're talking about 150 to 200 bucks US. So yeah, it's an expensive price to pay. For this review, or shall I call it head-to-head -head showdown, we're gonna be looking at five particular things. First is airflow. Um, how fast does that fan flow? That will be number one. Number two is gonna be quietness. Is it a quiet unit? Is it gonna drive you crazy? Do you need earmuffs? We'll soon find out. Build quality, well, that goes without saying. Air quality, another important thing. When you're running with a fume extractor, you do expect to have better quality air around you when you're soldering. So hopefully both of these will pass in that department. Finally, we're gonna look at the overall value and we're gonna see who comes out the winner. Hey, should be interesting. 
Here we have uh, two of the uh, mini sound meters right in front of us now. Those will be testing the output volume when I turn on the unit. So we're going to start off with the Heiko. So you can see that Heiko gave us a maximum output of 75.6 dBAs. All right, let's try it with the Kato. All right, there we go. So the Kato just a tiny bit louder, coming in at 75.9 dBAs. Wow, really too close to call. But if we're gonna go by sheer numbers, definitely the Heiko is just a tad quieter. Now I've turned that Heiko on its side and we will see how it is in terms of that output volume uh, in this method. Here we go. So a little bit louder when it is down in the horizontal, the Heiko comes up to 77.5 dBAs. Now this is the preferred method that Heiko recommends to use the unit in. So if we go by that number, then in this case, the Kato is the winner. Oh, wow. Take these fume extractors and put them to the ultimate test. What does that mean? Well, here we go. We've got our uh, anemometer out and we're gonna take a look at how well they suck. So let's starting off with the Heiko FA400. Here we go. So as you can see, we're pushing about 5.4 kilometers per hour. That is the uh, wind speed, the suction speed for the Heiko. So that's And we're starting off with the Kato now. Over six kilometers per hour, sitting now at 6.4 kilometers per hour. We have some better suction with the Kato, surprising. So that equates to about four miles per hour. Now, a lot of the marking hype surrounding the FA400 involves this horizontal position. Um, unfortunately, what I'm seeing does not correlate with the marketing mumbo jumbo. We're showing around 5.4 kilometers per hour as the uh, suction speed. Um, really no better, in fact, uh, than when it is standing vertically. So I'm not sure what that's all about, but uh, I don't see any performance increase whatsoever uh, when it's lying down like this. Too bad. It looks like the Kato uh, wins this round. Good job, Mr. Yellow. By the way, for this review, I'm using the Stanel one millimeter uh, solder uh, leaded, of course. Next up, we're gonna be looking at air quality. Super important. I mean, that's what these extractors are all about to keep you safe. Um, I've got a, a standard soldering iron here right now. It's been heating up for a while. Um, none of the fans have been turned on. Uh, still, we are in the good zone uh, in terms of an overall air quality rating. So I am going to apply a little bit of solder and start up the Heiko. All right, here goes the solder. And you can just see it oozing into that Heiko. And still we have a pretty good air quality index here around 10 UGs uh, in the good range. Basically anything under 12 is considered acceptable. Okay, so we're doing the same thing on the horizontal here uh, with the Heiko. Now, once again, they do claim a better airflow, although I'm not really seeing it um, slightly better, but uh, uh, now we're showing as 16 and whoa, that was interesting. Oh my goodness. Okay, so, hmm, yeah. 
We'll see if this moves any. But, uh, okay, it's starting to go down. We're definitely in the hazardous zone right now. And we got there awfully quick. Okay, it is going down. Let's uh, see how quickly it goes down. So it is going down slowly but surely. It's taken about uh, three or four minutes thus far. But anyway, kind of disappointing uh, not seeing that improved airflow. And uh, uh, yeah, what can I say? I was surprised. Alrighty, next up is the Kato. Hottering, soldering iron is heating up. And here we go. Wow, look at it, just suck that smoke right in there. Beauty. And so far we're looking at a 10.2 reading. That's a lot of solder. Wow, looking good. So, hey, excellent. So it seems to be a little bit lower on the scale than the Heiko. Seems to be just doing a tad bit better in terms of that overall exhausting. Excellent. Hey, I'm impressed. Let's take a look at the internal build quality. Um, on the left, we have our Heiko, and there is a 120 millimeter fan. Chiefly is the name. Chiefly Choice Company Limited. Well, that has a nice ring to it. Chiefly Choice Company. Um, two ball bearing. Whoa, made in China. Oh, okay, I wasn't expecting that. So even though the uh, Heiko does claim, and it actually says on the box, made in Japan, the fan they're using, which is really the uh, heart and soul of the unit, is actually made in China. For the Kato, on the other hand, uh, once again, we have that 120 millimeter fan, AC axial impedance protected, made in China. And uh, yeah, proudly says the Shenzhen Hong Tai Electric Company. Both of the fans as well, really good high quality units. Um, uh, solid metal on the outer frame assembly. Heavy duty ABS for the fan themselves. Both have five blades. Um, yeah, just really good quality fans here. Not really much else going on internally. Once again, these are pretty bare bones units. Um, that Heiko does have the, the housing itself. Um, but uh, really it is nothing more than a plastic shell. And I don't know about you, but my experience tells me that plastic has a tendency to melt. Take a look at the on off switch for the Heiko. Um, there's the rocker switch right there. Pretty decent looking. Um, no in insulation on the outside here, although it does have this sort of plastic doohickey that just goes over top like that to uh, give it a bit of protection. Um, once again, both of these fans should be grounded. Here's the grounding for the Heiko, and let's just make sure that works. Yeah, so grounded. Looking good. Same thing for the Kato. There is our rocker switch slash on-off button right here. Here they have some nice insulated shielding going on. I really like that heat shrinking right on top. Um, always preferred. And uh, once again, this should be grounded as well. Yep, all is well in grounding land. So both fans ESD safe, both are grounded properly. And uh, basically same size and same overall threshold. On the back of the Heiko as well, it says made in Japan, Heiko Corporation, um, even though it's using a Chinese fan. There you have it folks, in all honesty, um, they both suck. That was a joke, get it? Because that's what they do. Um, Believe me, the last thing I wanted to do is call down any of these units. They're both pretty well made, durable, and offer a lot of great performance uh, considering the money you're spending. But if we're looking at overall bang for buck here, and you know what, just general all out quality, there's a clear cut winner. Yes, indeed, the Cotto Fume Extractor sucked in a great way. Boy, this thing does an amazing job. It is just top notch. Bang for dollar. I mean, we're talking 30 bucks US, around $37 Canadian. This is a great, great buy. Great solid metal construction. It has some really nice rubberized feet on the bottom. Gives you not one, but two of those carbon inserts. And it is a powerful little beast. 
It's not the quietest unit in the world, but hey, you know what? It does the job and it does the job really, really well. It bested that Heiko, as far as I'm concerned, an overall performance value bang for buck. The Kato Fume Extractor Extraordinaire gets a solid four out of five stars. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this head-to-head, tete-a-tete showdown. Plenty more coming. Guess what? You want one of these? All you have to do is leave a comment below. Tell me what your favorite soldering iron or soldering station is or what the one is that you're using. I'm curious, you know, because, hey, I'm a curious guy. Let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and you're automatically entered to win this amazing Cotto Fume Extractor. Draw will be December 1st, so don't be shy. And just because I love having fun with you guys, a while back I did a review on a multimeter, and in that review I sang. Yes, I know, scary thought. Something along the lines of, I promised you a blank multimeter garden. If you can fill in the blank, you're going to win that multimeter. It's as simple as that. First one with the correct answer gets it shipped out ASAP. Hey, what can I say? This channel puts a smile on your face. At least I hope so. Thanks for watching, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.